know what A and B do. Again, quick uh, refresher. Amplitude is what? Very good. It's the absolute value of A. The period is controlled by what? By B. It's 2 pi over B. Then what does C does? Phase shift. Yep, phase shift exactly, or displacement. Which is negative C over B. And what does the phase shift mean? If I have a phase shift, uh, you know what, I'll go to example. Instead of, I'll take a new page with it, so, because I'm going to need more of the stuff here. So let me take an example here. Let's say I want to graph uh, y equals, I'll start with the basic one, sine, I didn't say any number in the front, that means 1 here. X, notice I didn't put any number, which means 1, plus pi over 4. To the right? To the left. Well, let's see. Amplitude equals the absolute value of 1, which is what? 1. The period is going to be 2 pi divided by what? B. And what's B here? 1. That's a 2 pi. This is B. And the phase shift or displacement, it's negative C over B, which is negative pi over 4 divided by 1, which is negative pi over 4. It's a sine function. So again, let me graph the basic sine function. Then on top of it, I'll put what our function will look like. This is the basic sine function. If I didn't have the shift, it will look like this. That's the 2 pi, right? But this one says my function is going to look just like this. It has an amplitude of 1, has a period of 2 pi, but it does not start at 0. It starts where? Negative, Negative pi over 4. So that's going to start on the left side. It's going to start somewhere here. It's going to look like this. So where is it going to end then? The period plus the phase shift. I like that. The end here equals the period plus the shift. That's where it's going to end. So instead of ending at 2 pi, so it doesn't start at 0. Notice it starts at pi, at negative pi over 4. It's going to end at the period plus the shift. What is my period here? 2 pi. 2 pi. And what's my shift? Negative pi over 4. Well, if I want to add these two, what do I need? Common denominator, which is 4. So 2 pi, that's 2 pi over 1. So I can write that as what? 8 pi over 4, right? Plus the shift, which is negative pi over 4. So what are we going to end it at? Positive 7 pi over 4. So that's where the function is going to end. So instead of starting at 0, it's going to start at negative pi over 4. It's going to have 2 pi to complete its shape, which means it's going to end at this point, which is whatever the starting point. That's the shift plus the period.
from now on I'll bypass that black line that you see here, just draw the graph that we're looking for. Just the final answer. Go ahead, Ricardo. Where did you get the value for C? C is this number. Where's the standard form? C is this guy. Well, so in this example, that's my C. This is B, there's a one here. This is one, this is A, B, and C. Right? Mm -hmm. A is one, that's why the amplitude is this. Period is two pi over B, B is one. This is C and this is B, the shift is negative C over B. And if it's negative, it's going to start on this side. If it's positive, it's going to start on that side of the shift. It's positive. Is there a reason why um, C is a negative? Like, just when this plus would be a negative? Well, if you remember from x axis, when the value is plus, always starts on the left. When it's minus, always on the right. That's the shifting. You know? That's because we're looking for what value, basically, what value will make this one zero? What number you put here to make this one zero? Well, for x plus pi over 4 to be zero, x will have to be what? Negative pi over 4. That's why when it's plus, you have to add negative pi over 4 to make it the zero, which is the starting point. So if this was the negative here, to make this value zero, you want that value to be what? Positive. So that's the reason why when it's plus, you go to the left, you want to be negative. When it's negative, you want to go to the right to make it positive because you want to make that value zero. You know. And I'll show that again in the next example. Let's take another one. Graph. y equals 3 sine 2x minus pi over 6. Let's write everything we know about this problem. Amplitude is what? The absolute value of 3, which is what? 3. The period, 2 pi over b, and what's b here? 2 pi b, 2, that'll give me what? Pi. And the shift equals what? Negative C over B. There's the negative. What is C here? C is negative pi over 6. And what is B? 2. Negative, over, negative that's a positive what? Pi over 12. And notice you said, why when this is negative, the shift is positive? If I put pi over 12, what's 2 times pi over 12? Isn't that pi over 6? What's pi over 6 minus pi over 6? Zero. zero. So when this is negative, you want that to be positive to make this value zero. When this is positive, you want that to be negative to make this value zero. Okay. So that's the reason why you were asking. When it's plus, it's minus. Minus is plus. So this is a positive here. So again, this is a sine function, but it doesn't start at zero starts at pi over 12 somewhere here so it's a sign is going to look like this how high is it going to go three and down here is what negative three this is what pi over 12 and this value should be what pi over 12 plus the period. And what was my period? Pi. Well, the pi, isn't that 12 pi over 12? Plus the 1. You're right, that's 13 pi over 12. The only thing I will have to add to this, if you were to graph this, or if it's on the computer, 
they're not going to start from it. They give you a little continuation of this, a little piece of it. Because this is periodic. It just keeps going on and on and on. So you have to find where does the function start from and look at the value. See if it matches your number. Look where it ends. They'll give you that number. Make sure that number says 13 pi over 12. But they don't just give you that piece and erase this one because they want to give it to you from the y-axis. So they add that little piece. So look at the picture and see where does it start from and where does it end at. It should be labeled as pi over 12 and 13 pi over 12. The height should be 3 and negative 3. And if you have that, you get the right graph. Let's try another one. We're almost done with this, but let's try another one. Question on this one? These equations, all that stuff. Yep. No graphs, but all that stuff. Don't worry about it. We'll just deal with chapter 10 today. <laughs> Graph y equals negative 2 cosine 1 half x. What do you want to add? Plus or minus here? Minus. Minus what? Pi over 4. Can make anything. My amplitude is going to be the absolute value of what? Negative 2, which is what? 2. My period. 2 pi over b. b is what? 1 half. What's 2 pi divided by 1 half? 4 pi. My shift or displacement. Negative c over b. Negative. What's c? Negative pi over 4 divided by a half. We know that's positive, and if your, if your math, math is a little bit weak, that says pi over 4 divided by 1 half. Well, how do you do division? Don't we switch it to multiplication, flip the second number? So it's actually pi over 2. That's your shift. So when I graph it, it starts where? Pi over 2 is going to go, it's a cosine function, remember that's the karate kid, but there's a minus in the front. So the minus is going to flip it upside down, right? So it's going to start here, the peak value right here. And what's this number equal to? Minus 2, and this value is what? 2, and what's this number here? We know this is pi over 2, but what's that number? It's the shift, which is pi over 2, add to it the period, which is what? 4 pi. The 4 is 8 over 2. What's 8 over 2 plus 1 over 2? 9 pi over 2. Again, as I said, they're probably not going to stop the graph right here, so you're going to see it looking like this. Little piece coming this way. Might even go like this. So what your job is to figure out, okay, my graph is this piece. Let me look and see at pi over 2. Do they have this picture? Right here. Do they have that one? Is that number neg 9 pi over 2? Does it go down to negative 2? Does it go up to plus 2? You're trying to match that because they give you these pictures. They don't make you graph them. 
they give you different shapes of which one looks like your graph. So once you graph yours, you have four of them, you have to find out which one, the closest one to yours, and you select that graph. Make sense? Any question on this? Everyone is good? Okay.